Hey everybody, I'm going to do a problem where we're going to drop a mass from above a spring and we're going to do some calculations to figure out how much that spring is going to compress. We're going to take a strategy where we're going to look at the energy and conservation of energy specifically. The things that will be included in this problem are kinetic energy, so it's important to understand that if it's moving at all, there's going to be some energy tied up in the kinetic energy of a mass. So we'll be dropping our mass from up here somewhere. We're going to say it's 2 kilograms. There's some potential gravitational energy because it has the ability to fall down. And then over here we have the elastic potential energy that's associated with the compressed spring. Remember that X is a value that represents the amount of compression that the spring is experiencing from its equilibrium position. So this is from the equilibrium position. The K value, that is the spring constant. That is the stiffness of the spring. So what I'm going to do in this problem, I'm going to just start with an initial idea. And I'm going to say that in part A of this problem, we're going to gently rest this 2 kilogram mass on this particular spring. And we're going to watch. And we're going to see that it compresses down to where it has a height of 17 centimeters. And just to be clear, what we've done is we've gently laid this mass on top of the spring. Everything is at rest. It's now in equilibrium. And I'm doing this because I just want to get the problem moving and I want to say that this is how we're going to discover what the value of K is, of the spring constant. So you can see here that this quantity, the amount of compression, that is our X value. That is the 3 centimeters but of course when I'm working with problems like this in physics, centimeters are usually something that's going to cause some problems. And so I will immediately go and start treating this compression as 0 0.03 meters. So what I have is I have a logic argument where I can come down and let's show this 2 kg mass. And I know that on this mass, there are two forces. There's an Fg, the force due to gravity, which is equal to mass times the negative 9.8 number. That's acting down. And then there's an applied force from the spring, or a Fsp, whatever you want to call it, which is equal and opposite right now. So what I'll do down here is I'll say the Fg is equal to the 2 kilograms multiplied by this negative 9.8 meters per second squared number, this is going to be equal to a negative 19.6 newtons. And again, through a logic argument, if everything is in equilibrium, and these are the only forces that I have, F net must be equal to zero. So the applied force from the spring must be an upward 19.6 newtons. So now what I do is I plug into Hooke's law, which is right here, and I say the 19.6 newtons provided by the spring is equal to, and then this negative, I put it here. I never want this thing to be a point of confusion. What that is, is that is a direction changer for Hooke's law. And so if I want to take that into account, the way I would have to justify it is actually my displacement down from equilibrium. It was down, so really I should probably call this negative 3 cm. And so I would have a negative, and then the spring constant, that's a script k times negative 0 0.03. That's one way to justify it. So if the compression is down, the spring pushes up. Sometimes you will see Hooke's law written as just this. And I think that's fine. You can still use a logic argument to know which direction the force is being applied by the spring. Then you can just treat it as looking at the magnitudes of force related to the compression. Either way, I don't want to get too caught up in that. Really, all we're doing is, again, we're trying to find the spring constant so that we can progress with the real problem. So what I get is that the spring constant is 19.6 newtons divided by 0 0.03 meters, which means the spring constant is equal to 660 newtons per meter. So let me clear some board space. I've got some board space. You can see that I wrote my spring constant up here. We're assuming that it's the same spring. What we're going to do now is we're going to start this idea where I drop this mass from rest. And I'm going to drop it at a height of 45 centimeters referenced against the ground. And my spring was 20 centimeters above. The first thing I want to do is I want to know 
how far the spring is going to actually compress when it's getting squished down this way and it reaches that spot where just for a moment the velocity goes to zero that means my kinetic energy is going to go away and the spring is at its most compressed state and it's about ready to fling back upwards and shoot this thing back up. So I want to know what is that maximum compression. Our strategy is going to be a conservation of energy idea. We're not going to allow for any frictions in this problem. So the first thing I want to know is how much energy do I have up here? So E, e total, that's what that's representing. Remember I said I'm dropping it from rest, but what I'm really going to do is I'm still going to include this kinetic energy term because if you wanted to know some sort of intermediate state, you would need that term. So I have the kinetic energy of the mass plus the potential energy due to gravity, that's my MGH there, plus the potential energy that is inside of this spring. Initially when this thing is up here starting from rest, the kinetic energy goes to zero because it's again from rest. The potential energy in the spring is zero because it hasn't even started getting compressed yet. So my total energy is easily described by just MGH and you all will recall that with potential energy you have the ability to choose your reference location. There's two strategies that I could take in this problem. Either I make the ground level the reference location and so at this spot where there's some compression I will have some potential energy which will be associated with this height and then I will have some potential energy from the spring associated with this amount of compression. Or what I can do is I can make this location my reference height and I can have a negative potential energy as it falls below the reference and then I also have an X value which is this compression. And notice how these things are happening in the same direction. Turns out that's going to be the easier spot to call the reference but it's perhaps a little less intuitive. I'm going to start with this one and hopefully have time to go back and show you that they come out to the same result. Okay so if the ground is my reference my total energy right now is equal to the 2 kilogram mass the 9.8 meters per second squared from gravity and then I have 0 0.45 meters remember I want to be in meters not centimeters. This is equal to 8.82 joules of energy. Now with that reference point that I've picked the total energy must always equal that and it's just going to get flung around between kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, and the potential energy of the spring. But in total it must always equal that particular value. So before I go any further I want to identify that this value in the compressed state, I'm going to call that h, that's the height of the object for mgh, but then this value here, the amount of compression, that's the x, that's actually going to be equal to 0 0.2, the initial location, minus h. And that is how I will need to refer to this, otherwise I'm going to have too many variables to solve. This is going to allow me to put all my potential energy terms in terms of h. So for the compressed state, the very lowest state, the total energy, which is by the way still going to be that 8.82, is going to be equal to the kinetic energy, which is going to go to zero, but let's leave it in there, plus mgh for the gravitational potential, plus one half k x squared is 0 0.2 minus h, all of that squared. So this is zero, and I can fill in my numbers and say 8.82, that's joules, is equal to m is 2 kilograms, 9.8 meters per second squared. h is my variable that I'm trying to solve, plus 1 half 660 newtons per meter times, and then if I expand that out, it's going to be 0 0.04 minus 0 0.4 h plus h squared. I'll do one more step of simplification before I have to turn to the quadratic formula. So this is 19.6 h plus this quantity is 330 but then multiplied by 0 0.04, 13.2 minus 
132H, that's the middle term of what's in parentheses over here, plus 330H squared. So let's go ahead and go zero for the quad is equal to, I'll write the squared term first, 330H squared. So I've gotten rid of that. Now I need the first order terms. So it's a positive 19.6 minus a 132 negative 112.4 h then I have a plus 13.2 and then this is going to get turned over to the other side so it'll be a minus so I get plus 4.38 plug this into the quadratic formula you're going to get two solutions 0 0.296 meters or 0 0.045 meters if you look closely You'll notice this one is actually not a valid answer, given that it implies the height of the spring was actually bigger than the original equilibrium position. So this is our one over here. This is the one that we really like. So it would be that far off the ground. Remember, I had solved for h. Alternatively, you might want to report it in terms of how much the spring compresses, which would be 20 minus this quantity, or 0 0.155 meters or 15.5 centimeters is how much it compresses. So let's briefly take a look at what would happen if you choose the other reference point. So if I come in and make this the reference location, there's a couple things you need to notice. First of all, I cannot use the 0.45 meters for finding out the initial energy of this thing. Remember that the spring and the kinetic energy terms went away. So my total energy was originally just equal to the gravitational potential, but this time the h value here is this height, which happens to be 0.25 meters. So e total is equal to 2 times 9.8 times 0 0.25 meters. So we find that e total was equal to 4.9 joules. Now that's a different number than before, and that's fine because we are not using the same reference location, so it certainly shouldn't have the same amount of potential energy. Now when this thing compresses down here, that's going to be represented by the x value for the spring part, but that's also representative for how far below the reference location you are as far as gravitational potential energy. So x is h. h is x in this particular strategy. So you find that E total, which was the 4.9 joules, is a combination of MGH plus the 1 half KX squared plus my kinetic energy term. It doesn't look like I'm going to have time to solve a problem with this, but you can see right here that if you were to shift some of the energy from the spring over into kinetic, so you might have still a little bit more gravitational potential if it's say at this intermediate location here, but pretty easy to figure out. You'd have some amount of potential energy in the spring, also easy to know if you know the height here, and all the rest just would be contained in that kinetic energy term. For our purposes, since we are going to do the bottom point here, this is zero, and this h is actually going to go to an x for us. So I have 4.9 joules, that's the total energy, is my 2 times 9.8, that's the mg, times x that I'm solving for, plus 1 half of 660 times x squared. 4.9 equals 19.6x plus 3 30x squared. So 0 is equal to 330x squared plus 19.6x minus, because I'm swinging that term over, 4.9. And I find that x again has two values, 0 0.0957 or negative 0 0.155 meters and you'll notice that's actually what we had before. So the x is dropping, it's negative, it's below the reference, whereas before I was solving for h. So make sure you identify that here I solve for x before I had actually solved for the h value, which was this. So they are in agreement, um, though they're presenting slightly different information. Hopefully that problem made sense to you. If it did, certainly you should let your computer know.